Hello math learners! In this video, we'll be going over quadratic equations. Some students struggle to see when an equation is a quadratic equation. We have a particular method that we need to use when our equation is a quadratic equation. And we're going to apply this method, this quadratic equations method, when you see a squared term in the equation. So our variable over here, squared, squared term, it means that we're going to get two solutions, quadratic, squared term, two solutions. So as soon as you see x squared, you know, quadratic equations, this is the method. Before I get to the method, I just want to highlight that some students see an equation like this, and they don't actually realize that this is a quadratic equation. They try and do weird things, and they try and solve for this in a strange way. As soon as you see the x squared, squared term, you need to apply the quadratic equation method. And this is the method. If you see a squared variable, get it into standard form. Now, what does standard form mean? We make the equation equal to zero. So if it's not equal to zero yet, we have to make it equal to zero. And it does help to put it in descending powers of x. What that means is x squared goes first, followed by x descending powers of x. So for example, it doesn't really help in some cases, you'll see why later, to have the equation look like this. We should put this term first. Then once it is in standard form, we factorize the expression. We can use highest common factor, difference of two squares or trinomials, and then we make each bracket equal to zero and we solve each equation. Let me show you what I mean. So here's my first example. And as you can see, this is a quadratic equation. It says solve for x. We need to get our solutions, our answers. And we know it's quadratic because of the x squared. So you know, okay, I need to get this into standard form, which means it needs to equal zero, which it does, and descending powers of x, which it is. So step one is done. Then we're going to factorize. So I hope that this is clear that this is a trinomial. If you need help with knowing how to factorize trinomials, I have a whole playlist, several videos on how to factorize trinomials. So you'll need to go and watch those videos. But essentially, there's my factorized version of the trinomial. Now that it is in this form, so one term fully factorized, we take each piece of this equation, if I can put it that way. Essentially each bracket and we make it equal to zero. So x plus four equals zero or x plus three equals zero. So here x can be negative four or x can be negative three. If some people see an example like this one, example two, they don't actually know that it's a quadratic equation because they say, hmm, ma'am, where's the x squared? If I had to distribute this or expand this, which we're not going to do, but if I had to, you would see that this is 6x squared. There's your x squared. So this is clearly a quadratic equation. It's already in standard form. It's equal to zero. It's already been factorized, essentially. We've got one term here on the left-hand side. So now all we need to do is take each piece, each bracket, and make it equal to zero. So that. So how do we do this? Take the negative one over, becomes positive one. And then we divide both sides by 3, 1 over 3. Or 2x plus 1 equals 0. Subtract both sides by 1. Opposite of plus 1 is minus 1. So 0 minus 1 is minus 1. Divide both sides by 2. So negative a half. You may, if you can, see it. Just skip to the answer. So if you can see this bracket and think, hmm, if I make that equal to 0, it's, x is going to equal a third. You're allowed to do that. You don't have to show me this. In this example over here, we can see that it's a quadratic equation. Remember what I told you to look out for, the squared term. However, it's not in standard form. So remember, we must make it equal to zero. So x squared minus 5x. This is plus 6 on the side. So you need to do the opposite, the inverse. Minus 6 equals zero. Now that it is in standard form, we can factorize. So again, this video isn't about how to factorize. You can go check out the links in the description box for that. And now that we have one term over here equals to zero, we can say x is equal to six or x is equal to negative one. I got these numbers from taking each bracket and making it equal to zero and then solving. Okay, that's basically where I got this number from and this number. There's two solutions, quadratic. If you see something like this, sorry, I know the examples aren't numbered correctly anymore. This is technically the fourth one. If you see something like this, 
This is also a quadratic equation, x squared. I know in grade nine, you may have been used to solving this in a different way. So we would have divided both sides by two and then, so I'll show you, divide both sides by two and then the inverse of square is square root. This is one way to answer this question. Just remember the square root of nine is plus minus three, okay? I would prefer you in grade 10, 11, and 12 to, as soon as you see quadratic equation, 2x squared equals 18. So the square tells me it's quadratic. Get it into standard form. So past 18 becomes negative 18 equals zero. Now we need to factorize this piece over here. Highest common factor first. So take out a two. You're left with x squared minus nine. Make it equal to zero. And then this is difference of two squares. So x plus three, x minus three equals zero. Now, technically, this is an equation, so this is very valid. I can get rid of the 2 on both sides by dividing by 2 on both sides. It essentially leaves us with x plus 3, x minus 3 equals what's 0 divided by 2? 0. So we take each bracket and make it equal to 0. So therefore, x is negative 3 or x is positive 3. This is exactly the same answer I got earlier. Remember, earlier, when doing the grade 9 method, I got plus minus 3 the same thing. Positive three, negative three. This is the preferred method that I would like you to focus on. How about example five? So it's quadratic. We've got a square. It's equal to zero. Descending powers of x. We need to factorize. We can take out an x. Highest common factor, we're left with x minus three. Now in this case, we cannot divide to get rid of the x. Like remember in the previous example, we had a two over here. So we divided both sides to get rid of the two. We can't do that with the X because the X, basically, if we do that, we are taking, getting rid of one of our roots, one of our answers. So technically we need to make this equal to zero. So X is equal to zero, or we need to make this equal to zero. X minus three equals zero. So X is three or X is zero. This one might trick you because you see two brackets here and you might think, okay, cool. I can just say X minus eight equals zero and X plus two equals zero. But is it equal to zero? No, it's not. So actually you first need to get this equation into standard form. So opposite of minus 16 plus 16. Now that it's in standard form, because we have two terms here, we actually cannot go ahead with our method. We first need to expand these two brackets, then simplify and see what happens. So we apply the FOIL method over here. And when we apply the FOIL method, we get this over here. We carry the plus 16 down. Then we do like terms. The negative 16 plus 16 gives me zero. So they cancel essentially. Those two cancel each other out equals zero. And then I can factorize. So I take out an X, you're left with X minus six equals zero. So X can be zero or X can be positive six. Remember, we have two solutions, two roots, essentially two answers, and you must say or in the middle. Keeping in mind that there is a very big difference between quadratic and linear is essential. I really hope that this lesson helped. In the rest of this equations playlist, I'll be covering all different types of equations. I'll see you in the next video.